Okay, so in our last episode, we left off by defining the text box inside of the instance name to contain text. The value of the text is be called price. Now again, if I go to control, command return, test movie, and I test the movie, and I'm expecting this to say price. And it doesn't say price because the font needs to be embedded. I have to embed the font that I'm going to use for the Flash application. So how do I do this? Well, I go back to my timeline, I go to my library, and I'm going to double click MC Nav. That's where the text box is contained. So I select the text box, and because it's dynamic text, I go to my text properties, and I want to embed this typeface. We're going to call the typeface what it is, which was impact nav impact. Now the reason I'm putting nav to tell to tell someone that I'm using it for my nav properties. So impact nav. Now I want to make it uppercase, lowercase. If I want to use numerals, if I want to use punctuation, and if I want to use any kind of glyphs. So now make sure that you pick exactly what you're going to use. Don't select all my glyphs and all my characters because it's going to render out in 50 different languages. You're going to be here all night. So if I hit OK, notice if I go to my library, it edit the font to my library, which is now rendered. Make a change, save a change. So if I go back to scene one and I play the application, command return, you will see that it now says price. It says price because, because I embedded the font. So you have to understand that. If your font is rendered properly under any circumstance, you need to render that font. So let's move forward. So if I go back to my action script, go to my actions frame action, how do I create the other text? Well, I could go up here and start from, from scratch, but why don't I just copy and paste the code? So that's a simple way since I have a computer, copy, hit return, keep paste, hit return, keep paste. I want this instance name, which is my PRO instance name, contain the word products. And I want this instance name, which is my service instance name, to contain the word services. Now recall, we copy fitted services so we know that service is going to fit inside of this text box. Now don't expect to see it here inside the Flash application. You need to run the application by hitting command return. You have to execute the script. So if I execute the script, it says price, product, services, price, product, services. Now, this is just an aesthetic thing, but if it helps you, I can basically write some programmer's notes to myself. I can say forward slash, forward slash, this, these, be radically correct. These are my nav titles. Then I could basically, and I could say nav titles start. And I'm going to copy and paste that and say this is my nav titles end. Now, why is this important? Because this can be an application that you didn't touch for six months. Or this could have been something that you did part of it, but then another part of it is going to a partner or a coworker. So by putting these little pieces of text in here, it tells you exactly what these are used for. So now we're going to talk to the different buttons. We're going to navigate to different parts of our timeline. Now, before we do this, I want to share with you a very simple concept. Action script, 90% of action script is logic. Writing the code is actually the simple part. We're in the put the, learning where to put the code and how to insert the code is basically logic and very, very logical deductive thinking. So we want to go to our timeline. Now, our objective here is to click price and have it go to the price section of our timeline, then the product section of our timeline, then the service section of our timeline. So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to create some sections. Now, it doesn't matter where I start, but I'm going to start at section 20, timeline 20 by inserting the timeline, F6. I just want it to be past frame 10. I could have started this on frame 11, so I'm going to pick 20. Now, what am I going to name this section? I'm going to go to my property palette and simply name the section PRI. I'm going to label the frame, the frame label, deductive thinking here, frame label is going to be called Price, P or I. Then I'm going to click frame 30. Insert a keyframe. 
F6. Now I can see that it says that we're at PRI. I want this to say Y P R O for products. So if I put my cursor here and insert a keyframe F6, I want this to say S E R for services. Now this next step is just an aesthetic thing. I can see that it says price. I can see that it says products, but I can't see that it says services. So I'm going to put my cursor right here and not insert a keyframe because I have no changes. I simply want to insert a frame, which is F5. Now I can see that it says service. Now looking at this further, there's really no reason for my comp to go past this point. So I'm going to select between here and here. I'm going to hold down the control key or right click on Windows and remove frames. So the whole entire application is going to terminate at frame 50. Now officially, technically, the comp could have terminated right here, but we're just going to keep this simple. Okay, so now I have different sections of our timeline, but if you move your timeline, you'll notice I can't tell that I'm in the price section or the product section or the service section because it all looks the same. So until I get the information from the client that's supposed to go there, I'm just going to go to my brush tool, B for brush, and I'm going to make sure I have this keyframe selected. I'm going to put in a pounds, a dollar symbol to represent the price section. Then I'm going to go to the products and put in the P to represent the product section. Again, I'm doing this until I get the assets from the client or until I build my application further. So now I'm going to select service and put in yes. So now we're going to move my playback head. This is the price section. This is the product section. This is the service section. Make a change, save a change. Very simple process. I didn't have to set type. I didn't have to drive myself nuts. I just went to my brush tool and basically marked off the section. So now I can go to these different sections of my timeline. How do I do this? I go back to my action script layer, my action script keyframe in frame 10. Now I want to build the rest of my action script. Very simply done, logically deductive thinking. So we're going to do the same thing we did a second ago. We're going to put, put button sections start that we're going to have button sections end. Now, what do you think goes here? What's going to go here is the action script to tell this nav button what to do. So I'm done talking to this instance name. I want to talk to this instance name. I can simply take copy, take name of the instance. Now again, if it helps you to understand that you're talking about this instance, if that helps you, then put that here. Now I don't want this to sound like a who's on first, yes, no, who's on first, yes, no, who's on first, yes. This instance refers to this instance. So it's basically just semantics, this instance name. Now what do I want to have happen when I click this instance name? Well, I, what I want to have happen is a series of mouse events. The mouse event I'm looking for is on release, not on click, not on double click, not on rollover, on release. That's how software works. Software happens when I let go of the mouse. It doesn't happen when I click the mouse. It happens when I let go. That's known as on release. Now, because I call this price underscore MC, watch, I can hit the period symbol code hints, hints of code, code hints. So I'm going to type in lowercase on capital R, it's camel case, on release. Now what I want to have happen is when I release the mouse on this instance name, I want that to equal a function. Now who can recall what other piece of code in here is a function? This is a function. Function syntax is name of the function followed by open and close parentheses. Now what the function does goes between the two curly braces. So I do an open curly brace, I hit the return key twice, and I do a closing curly brace. Semicolon to terminate line of code, arrow key up to put my cursor here. So what I want to have happen here, guys, is I want to release the mouse on this instance name, and based on my timeline control, based on these choices, based on these choices, what do I want to do? Well, based on these 
choices I want to go to and stop on a frame. Now, if I paid attention to your earlier video, I can do the shortcut, which is simply Escape GS. Escape GS. I'm just going to tighten it up here. So what's the name of the frame? What's the name of the frame that I want to go to? The name of the frame is called PRI. That's the name of the frame I want to go to. That's a string of information. String is going of quotation mark. So quotation mark PRI and quotation mark. Make a change, save a change. So therefore, if I play this application, command return, and click, nothing happens when I click, but when I release, it goes to the frame called price, PRI. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Okay, so let's review this. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying name of this instance when I release the mouse, which is a mouse event. What else could this have said? This could have said on double click, on rollover, on roll out. But I don't want to confuse my viewers, so I'm simply going to do my standard bread and butter on release. This creates a function. Now what the function does goes between these two curly braces. So when I release the mouse on this instance name called price, I want to create a function. What the function does goes between these two curly braces. So what I want this to do is go to install on PRI, which is the name of this section, this section. Now notice if I hit command return again and I click and release price, what happens to my navigation? My navigation isn't there because if you look up here, my navigation is in frame 10. How far down the road does my navigation need to live? How far down the road does it need to exist? It needs to exist as far as frame 40, not 50, that was just an aesthetic thing so I could see that it says services. So at frame 50, what do I insert, a keyframe or a frame? The answer, frame F5, because there's no changes to be made. I'm simply extending the frame, extending the frames. So you'll now see that the frames appear here. Make a change, save a change. So I have to command return again, and I click and release on price, it goes to the price section. Now these have not been programmed, we'll do that in the next video.